Well, good morning, everybody. If you'll take out your notes, I want to give you a quick picture on what is the purpose of Christmas. I was born in 1955. I love old people. <laughs> Why would I tell you that? Because 1955, 1955 years from what? <clears throat> no matter where you go around the globe, 2,000 years after the birth of Christ, you can't get away from Jesus. We even measure our days and our years according to the person of Jesus. There's a billboard sign in New York Times Square this year that was um, purchased by a group out of New Jersey. And at the top it says, keep the Mary, and their picture underneath the Santa. And below it says, drop the myth. And it's a picture of Jesus on the cross. I just want to tell don't get political on me, just stay tuned. You cannot get away from the reality of Jesus. No matter where you go or what you're about, it's all about Jesus. Today is the 16th of December, the year of our Lord, what? 2012. And 2,000 years ago, there was an event that took place that has changed us forever. On the other side of the globe, 2,000 years ago, and our lives are focused around that today. And it's about Christmas. So let me just tell you quickly, this morning, let me give you three purposes for Christmas. The first purpose of Christmas is Christmas is for celebration. Hopefully that's what we're kind of getting the idea. I know we've done so much to speed up Christmas and bury us in Christmas and, you know, the Christmas stuff is out before even Halloween. Have, did you notice that? There was Christmas stuff out before the end of October. We don't even get to Halloween and, and we get Christmas stuff. But the point is, Christmas really is about celebration. And the angel came to the shepherds and said, there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. This is in right outside the town of Bethlehem. Anybody been there? A few people have been there. That's cool. Ryan's been there, and Bethlehem's never been the same since. <laughs> there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. How many think if you ran into face to face an angel, you'd probably be a little scared too? And it's obvious in the scriptures, in the Bible, when you look at the scriptures, whenever an angel shows up, the first thing they say right after that is what? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So you'll know if you've ran into one, you will be frightened. Don't be afraid. But the angel said to them, the shepherds, do not be afraid. I'm bringing you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. What are you going to celebrate this Christmas? Good news of great joy. I have a suspicion that we oversell the joy of the things and undersell the joy of Jesus and our relationship with him. Why should we celebrate? Well, let me just give you three quick reasons. You ought to jot these down, and you should share them with everybody you get a chance to. The first reason I would tell you is because we celebrate Christmas because God loves you. Now, I know some of you, and it really shocks me that God would even love you. Now, that's what's so amazing about this God. Sometimes I catch myself driving along and looking over and seeing somebody in their car and thinking, you know, God really loves them too. And he loves me. God loves you. God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that anyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. Now, everybody right here, we tend to gauge our Christmas by our valuables. But your valuables do not determine your value. Your value is far greater than your valuables. Your worth to God is far greater than your net worth. You matter to God. 
And that's what Christmas is about because God wanted to reveal to you how much he cares about you. The second thing about why we should celebrate is because God is with you. God is with you. God says, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. God is with you. How many have uh, given notice to God, yes, you are with me? I want you to know there's no place you can go. There's nothing you can do. There's no place you can be that God is not with you. He is with you. Now, some of you, because you haven't experienced at times, you haven't even known the spirit of Christmas, you feel like you are all alone. Some people will be alone this Christmas, but I want you to know you're not alone. God is with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I won't abandon you. He's not going to leave you. The third reason we can celebrate is this. God is for you. Would you turn to the person next to you and just say, God is for you. Just tell them, God is for you. Let us be bold. <clears throat> Let us be bold then and say, the Lord is my hep helper, my helper. <laughs> I've got the spirit of Ryan on me from last week. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Be bold and say, the Lord is my helper. I hope this Christmas the Lord is your helper. You realize that he is. We celebrate because God loves us. We celebrate because God is with us and God is for us. You know what? I love this uh, John 3, 17. I hope you got it on your outline. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger at you. Now, I've... You know, the meanest people I've ever met are people that say they're Christians. That is a shame. That is a shame because that's not what Jesus is all about. God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it is. Now, how many know the world is bad? And how many know you've contributed? <laughs> but he didn't come to point his finger. He came to help to put the world right again, and it begins with you, and it begins with me. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? The first purpose of Christmas is celebration. Not celebration because we get everything we want as gifts, or we can get everything we want as gifts, or we can have a perfect world the way we want it, but because God loves you, because God is with you, and God is for you. What a great Christmas this is. If we experience that reality. We have a great reason to rejoice. The choir is going to sing, Glory to God in the highest. Let's give thanks to God today. Glory to God 
in the highest praise. Glory to God in the highest. We sing glory. about celebration because of who God is and what he's done for us. The second reason that we should uh, recognize for the purpose of Christmas is that Christmas is for our salvation. Christmas is for our salvation. The angel said to the shepherds today, in the town of David, a savior has been born for you. I suggest you circle for you. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. In other words, that baby 
was God in the flesh. Christmas is for our salvation. So, why salvation? What is salvation? Jesus saves. In fact, the word Jesus means God saves. Why salvation? Anybody here need saving? The word saving, salvation, it means to rescue. It means to deliver. It means to um, bring back to its original purpose, salvation. Now, the truth of the matter is, Every one of us in this room needs saving. The biggest issue is we don't recognize you may sit here and you say, I I don't think I need saving. Then this is perfect. This is exactly for you. Because the fact of the matter is we all need saving. And salvation is three-dimensional. Note it. Put it down on your notes. Here it goes. Salvation is three-dimensional. God comes. Jesus, God saves. He comes to save us from our sins to save, be saved from my sins. Give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Sins, my selfishness, my uh, thinking I'm the center of the world. What's the uh, middle letter of the word sin? What's the middle letter of the word pride? And our problem is that we put ourselves first, and that never works. But we are to put Christ first, and he saves us from our sins. It means that I can be, anybody here ever messed up? I mean, you know you messed up. How many of, anybody, you know, sitting near you that's messed up really bad? We have Christmas to recognize that he redeems us, he saves us, he gives us a clear conscience, he forgives us. When we come to him, he saves us from our sins, from our selfishness. Look at this verse in Romans chapter 7. It says, I've tried everything and nothing helps. Is there no one who can do anything for me? The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and he does. You know, our greatest dilemma is we don't recognize how much we really need Jesus in our lives. But he comes, first of all, to save us from our sins. And why salvation? So that we can be saved for a purpose. Saved for a purpose. Our life has meaning. Some of you think your life is an accident and you serve no great purpose on this planet. But I want you to know Christmas is all about reminding us and reminding you and reminding me that your life has a purpose. Before the world began, God had you in mind. And he had you in mind to be a partner with him, to serve with him in his purposes. He saved us and called us to be his own people, not because of what we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. Saved from our sins, saved for a purpose. If, look right here just for a moment. There is nothing that you have done in your past that would keep you from fulfilling your purpose and destiny for God. There's nothing you've done that will keep God, it would keep God from working in your life that you could still fulfill your destiny. And there's nothing that will keep that from happening if you experience the true reality of Christmas. The third aspect of salvation is we're saved by grace. Anybody have an idea what grace is? There aren't too many graces left in the world. We don't use the name grace much anymore. Saved by grace means that, you know what? If you could have saved yourself, you would have, but you can't. If you could have changed yourself, you would have, but you can't. The only way we change is because God does all the giving and we do all the receiving. Grace is God's power and his strength and his influence in our lives. Because God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved when you trusted in Christ. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God.
God became a little baby. His name is Jesus. He is God with us. He came so he could identify with us and we could identify with him. He came to give us salvation. Salvation from our sins and our selfishness. Saved for a purpose, our life has a meaning. Do you know, I would just uh, punch that a little bit. Some of you feel as though your life has no meaning. Christmas is all about God communicating that your life matters to him. You have a purpose. And God's willing to give you all the strength and all the desire and all the power you need when you put your trust in Jesus. And 2,000 years ago, when this baby was born, nobody had ever seen anything like this. The shepherds came and found the Christ child, and they rejoiced with Mary and Joseph. Nobody had ever seen anything like it. Emmanuel, God with us. The choir is going to sing.
Thank you, choir. Okay. The first purpose of Christmas is celebration. I bring you good news of great joy. The second purpose is that Christmas is about our salvation. Celebration, our salvation. I, today, 2,000 years ago, in the city of David, a little town called Bethlehem, a Savior is born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The third purpose of Christmas is for reconciliation. Would you say that uh, peace in relationships with other people is a big need in this day? Reconciliation. The angels declared glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to all people. Would you read that out loud with me? Let's say that out loud. We probably need to say that several times just to reinforce it. How many know that we need peace in this world more than ever today? Let's read it loud together. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all people. Where would you like to see peace this Christmas in your life? Is it between you and a child, a son, a daughter? Is it between you and a parent? Could it between, be between you and a spouse, you and an employee you work with? Where do you need to see peace in your life? Reconciliation, restored relationships, getting things right. How many think we need peace in the world? Three or four of us. We need peace in the world. Now, we don't have total peace in this world yet, but there will be a day when we will have peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But if we're going to have peace in the world, then we need to have peace in nations. And if we're going to have peace in nations, we need peace in community. And guess what? If we have peace in our community, in Watsonville, the Paro Valley, North Santa Cruz County, wherever you're from, Hollister, then we need peace in our families. And if we're going to have peace in our families, guess what? You need peace in your heart. It's an inside-out thing. That's where we start. Lord, help us. Man, it is so easy to point the finger and say, man, we need peace, and they need to get peaceful, and this and that. But it's an inside-out thing. And the only way we will have peace in our hearts is when we allow Jesus to be the Prince of Peace in our lives. And it's a journey. We're learning how to do it. But Christmas is all about reconciliation, peace, goodwill toward all people. So what's the peace that Jesus offers? What does he offer? He offers three kinds of peace. Here we go. First one is peace with God. Peace with God. <laughs> Peace with God. Okay, you got to stay with me on this. If you do not have peace with God today, I just want you to know you're at war. Not because Jesus is warring against you, but because if you don't have peace with God, you're warring against Him. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and the starting point is that you would have peace with your Maker, with God, your Creator who loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Want me to transfer a message there? Oh, they're talking to you, Marcy? Oh, Hannah was talking to you. Okay. All right, just pick it. It's funny the things you'll see sometimes from this direction. You, okay, do we need to get something through? Text them, okay? Was she looking for mom? Okay. I don't have my phone on me, Corey, sorry. We need peace in this room, I'll tell you. Three kinds of peace. Peace with God. That's a spiritual peace. Now that we have been put right with God through faith, we have peace with God. Why? Because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. So let me ask you a question. Have you made peace with God? 
Now, some of you say, I did back there some years ago, but kind of like it feels like kind of like you're warring with him today. Now, he may be pulling for you and he's all for you, but you're still warring against him. Do you have peace with God? Because that's what Christmas is all about. And how do we get this peace? By trusting Jesus Christ and trusting him for what he has done for us. Peace with God. That's spiritual peace. The second kind of peace he offers is the peace of God. The peace of God. When we have peace with God and we are concentrating on God, then how many know that our stress level goes down? Now, how many realize, if you haven't figured it out yet, you and I are living in an unnatural way? Let me explain it. We are given 168 hours in a week, and most of us in this room would say, I wish I had a few more days in the week. I wish I had a few more hours in the day. And we're just trucking along as hard and fast as we can go, and we'd say, oh, I've got to go faster. And uh, we have more stress in our lives than ever before. By the year 19, 19, 20, I, I passed the 19s last year, uh, 2030, it is projected that over half the population in the United States will be on depression medication. Half. Why? Because we're living stress-filled lives. We're all doing it. We're going too fast, too hard, saying, I got to get more in. And it's not getting more in. It's getting better in. It's beginning to rest and, and trust Christ. Look at these verses. I put them on your outline. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Just stop right there. You can either pray or you will panic. You can either worry or you worship. Now, how many here would be honest to say you do some share of worrying? How many uh, look around and say there's somebody I know worries and they're not lifting their hand? Just point them out right now. (laughs) If you will pray more, you will worry less. God says the indication that we really don't know God is that we worry. Now, I love this. Jesus said, look at the lilies of the field. Look how beautiful they are. And they don't stress or strain over it. It just happens. And they are dressed more beautifully than Solomon, the richest, wisest king ever was dressed And if God takes such good care and does such a great job with the lilies, won't he take care of you? And God says, I notice if a sparrow falls from the sky, I know that happens. If God our Father notices the birds, how much more would he notice you? Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What do you need for Christmas this year more than anything else? I suggest you need peace. Peace. Okay, the third kind of peace is not the peace you want to hear about. But we have peace with God and peace of God in our lives. And the third kind of peace as we celebrate Christmas is peace with other people. Peace with others. You know, uh, it's a great time to reach out. How many have an Uncle Wilbur who's kind of out of kilter that comes around for Christmas? You kind of go, that's the member of the family. You kind of go, oh, man. Anybody have any of those in your family? Don't be looking at them right now. I'm talking about they're coming to visit for Christmas. This is the third kind of peace, peace with others. Now, there are certain people that come to mind in my life at times, and I go, oh, as much as it depends on me, I want to be at peace with them. But I kind of find us feeding the wrong direction. You know, they did that to you, and why don't you, you got to, you know, get back and you treat them. You can't treat them nice. You know, God has in mind for us, if we have peace with him and the peace of God in us, that we will have greater peace for those around us. Even, you know, it's a divine conspiracy. God has recruited us into his kingdom that we could overcome evil with good. 
who in your life might you need to focus on building a bridge of peace this Christmas time? You know, they may not make peace with you, but you can reach out to them and you can demonstrate peace in some way. In fact, do it secretly if you don't want them to know and you're kind of frightened how they'd, you know, send them a gift anonymously and uh, just throw them off balance. Or do something nice for them even though they're treating you mean. Peace and the reason, how can we give peace to others? It's because we recognize we've been forgiven. God's put his grace in us that we have been helped. And if we worship more and worry less, then we'll realize the grace of God in our lives to reach out to others. Now, how many here have somebody in your life that you probably need to work on restoring a relationship with? Can I see your hand? And uh, you're, you're saying, if it's to be, it's up to them. No, as you're brought into the spirit of Christmas and the spirit of Christ, then we reach out with Christ and his grace. And don't worry about it. You can't fix every person and you're not going to fix every relationship. But as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Blessed are the troublemakers for they... Sh- no, <laughs> blessed are the peacemakers. Now, some of you work with troublemakers at work. You be a peacemaker. You compliment more than you complain. You build up more than you tear down. You be a peacemaker. If you say, and there are people in my life, I, I, I go, only by the grace of God will I be able to bridge that relationship again. And that's the point. If it's up to you alone, you will never make it. But by the grace of God, we can reach out to provide reconciliation to those around us. That's what Jesus has called us to in this Christmas season. So, as we bring this all together around the purposes of Christmas, you can either go through Christmas on your own and do it your way, or you can choose to worship the one and only Jesus Christ, who is not a myth. You seek out your own history. Let me just tell you, there's been nothing, nothing discovered in science that has disproved the greatness of our God. Don't believe the culture. Don't believe what they tell you that there is, and Jesus is only myth. Come on. Jesus has more historical reference points than any person ever on the planet. He's had the greatest influence in all the world for all history's time. Bar none. Bar none. Just consider Jesus. Because he's the one we worship. And let's do so as we head toward the finale here this morning. Worship the one.
Mother has to find her son. <laughs> Scott, we're doing it again, if you didn't hear. I just want to say, Scott Mangan is always enclosed in this drum cage all by himself down there. Just tell him you hear him and you love him. One 
Okay, I'm blessed. <laughs> ah, I came in so joy-filled this morning. And I let Satan get to me, and I had such a rotten attitude by the time we started church today. So I'm just admitting to you my ugly heart. I've just been praying all morning, God, forgive me my ugly heart. Forgive me. I sing with Travis, and I'm like, God, why do you bless me despite my ugly heart? <laughs> ah! But he does. And this, ah, just worship him. We worship him. I want to encourage you all to stand. And this is your opportunity to kind of enter in in the, the process of worship here this morning. And we're going to sing God be praised. Just let's lift it up. We're going to sing across the earth. We see worshipers believe. Hear our song. Praise to our God. Praise to our God. Across the earth, across the earth, we see worshipers, worshipers, believe, believe, hear our song, hear our song, praise to our God, praise to our God, from dawn till dusk.
Why don't we just take a moment and, uh, with encouragement, put our hands together as an expression of corporate faith in God and worship to Him this morning through His Son, Jesus. So uh, it's, it's just the easiest way for us to connect together and lift it up. And so would you just join me and uh, give Jesus a standing ovation? <laughs> come from all directions and all ages and all backgrounds. You're here this morning and you've experienced a lot. Some of you experienced a lot and you're not that old yet. And not all of it's been that good. But all that you're about and all that you've been about and the course you've taken in life, I believe personally, has led to this morning. You see, I believe God knows the beginning from the end. He is all-knowing. He knew exactly who'd be here on this Sunday morning. And some of you need to experience the reality of Christmas. Listen to my words very carefully. The reality of Christmas. Knowing that there is a God and He loves you. And before, it says in the Scriptures, before the world was framed, God had you in mind and had you as the focus of his love. God has had you in mind all of your life. This is the 16th day of December, the year of our Lord, 2012. Did I get the right date? And here's the message. I'm sorry I'm not a better spokesman for the glory of our God. But in this Christmas season, this would be his message to you. God, our Father in heaven, says, I love you. I love you very much. No matter who you are, where you've come from. And not only do I love you, I'm with you. And I'm for you. And through his son Jesus, he gives us an invitation. What a great invitation in the light of Christmas Jesus says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out on religion? Jesus says, come to me. Notice he didn't say, come to a religion. He didn't say, come to a building. He didn't say, come to a He said, come to me. Get away with me, he says, and you'll recover your life. Now, Christmas is all, as I understand it, all about giving gifts. We, how many are planning to give a few gifts? And, and the rest of you haven't thought of me? <laughs> next week will be the 23rd. It's still two days before Christmas. So if you haven't thought of me, next week is another opportunity. I'm just kidding. For those of you that are guests. But what if you gave me a Christmas gift? and I didn't open it. First of all, it would probably hurt you that I didn't open the gift. And second of all, whatever you gave me in the gift would not be any help to me because I didn't have the gift. I didn't get it. Some of you have never experienced or accepted the true gift of Christmas. What is the bottom line? What is reality? What is true life? It's why we celebrate Christmas Jesus, a Savior for you. What a gift. What a gift. And Jesus says whatever you've got in your life, he can replace it. Whatever bad is in your life, he can replace it with good. If you have frustration in your life, anybody have frustration in your life? He can replace it with relaxation if you put him first. Worry, anybody worried? He can replace it with peace. 
Is it real? Can God do this? If you have fear in your life, you know, after uh, Friday's terrible, terrible shooting in Newtown, Connecticut, halfway and then all the way across the country, we received phone calls here from the parents of the children in our Green Valley Christian School. In fact, uh, you may not know this, but Jeff told the story earlier. Earlier in this week, there was another shooting at a mall in Oregon. Jeff Herring's parents were at that mall. And uh, Jeff told the story. He said his dad, there was about 3 o'clock, and he, his dad suggested to his mom, hey, let's go to the food court and get something to eat. And mom said, no, 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 I've got something prepared at home. So they went home, and then uh, within the hour, turned on the news. They would have been right in the middle of that. See, we have lots of things to worry about, lots of things to fear. We need help. And instead of fear, faith and trust that God will see us through. Instead of guilt, how many know that a clear conscience is a wonderful thing? Instead of guilt, forgiveness. That's what Christmas is all about. Instead of confusion, you can get clear thinking. And I can relate. Sometimes I've been very confused. But thank God he can give us clear thinking. Some of you sit here today and you are very confused. It's because your life isn't centered in the person of Jesus. Trusting him. And he wants to give clear thinking. And emptiness. You know, some of you have been trying to make it happen for you all the days of your life. And you still are empty inside. God gives purpose and meaning to our lives. But there's one thing that God will not do. God will not force himself on anybody. People are asking, how come, if there is a God, why could there be such evil in the world? And uh, the point is very simple, and that is that God will never force himself on people. He allows them to choose whether they will accept his life and his gift to them or not. In the meantime, we experience some of the pain that's given to us from those who reject him. But he doesn't force his life on you, and it's your call, it's your life. I think it's on your notes, but it's the last verse. God plays no favorites. I think that's pretty good. My name is Smith, and I'm from Iowa, and I'm glad God doesn't play favorites. Because even though I'm from Iowa, my name is Smith, God still loves me. Where are you from? God plays no favorites. It makes no difference who you are or where you're from. If you want God and are ready to do as he says, the door is open. The message he sent to the people of Israel 2,000 years ago now, just pause for a moment. Let me just tell you something. I didn't, my Bible's down there on the front row. But the first part of that book is called the Old Testament. It was completed 400 years before Jesus showed up. 400 years. And in that old part, we call it the Old Testament, there are over 100 specific prophecies that foretold Jesus coming 2,000 years ago. Micah 5.2. There will be a ruler born to you in the town of Bethlehem. That's 400 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That is verifiable. That's reality. So God sent his son Jesus 2,000 years ago to reveal to us his good news. That through Jesus Christ, everything is being put together again. He's doing it everywhere among everyone. Okay, everybody still with me? Just a couple more minutes. Deanna's still waiting. It could be a while. (laughs) Sorry about that. Notice how attentive she is to me. Okay, focus. Let me just say this. I'm going to confuse some of you that are religious, but stay with me. I've said this before. I've gotten flack by this before. It's okay. I can take it. You may be Baptist today. What are you? I'm Baptist. You may be Buddhist here today. Probably not. 
but you might have wandered in accidentally and didn't realize where you were landing. <laughs> you may say you're Catholic or you're charismatic. You may say you're Pentecostal or you're Presbyterian or you're a protester. <laughs> you may uh, be a Jew or Jehovah's Witness. You may be Muslim or Mormon, Assemblies of God or Free Methodist or Nazarene or nothing. You may be Lutheran or Latter-day Saints. It does not matter what your label is. Don't talk about labels. It's not about religion. It's not about the label you put on other people and you put on yourself. It's about a relationship with God through his son Jesus. Now, I'm sorry that we've got it messed up pretty good. and We, we turn it into something we have to do. We have our religion. But Jesus came at Christmas so that we could experience the reality of a relationship with our maker, Almighty God. And he's so great that he can cover all of us all at the same time. You can be sitting there in your seat talking to him and somebody over here is talking to him and God's big enough he can handle it all. Some of you are examples of that because you can multitask. You can be talking to this person, texting with that person and watching this all at the same time. If you can do that, can't God connect with every person in the room all at the same time? You bet. You bet. Jesus Christ did not come to earth so that you could have a religion. And I'm sorry for those of us that have communicated to you that you think it's only a religion. It is not religion. Jesus came, in fact, to break down the religion so that we could have a relationship with God, our Father. It was no accident God brought you here today. Some of you have never experienced the reality of Christmas. This is your moment. This is your time. Would you bow your heads with me and let's pray. Just follow along. Just a simple prayer of faith. God's brought you here by his spirit, the spirit of Christ. He's been talking to you. You want to experience the real purpose of Christmas. I'm going to pray a prayer. As I pray it, you pray it as well. You can say it out loud. You can say it in your heart. You can say yes, yes, yes as I pray it. But I'm just going to pray a prayer that acknowledges that I am a need, needy person, that I need God's salvation, that I need his celebration in my heart, that I need reconciliation, peace with him and peace with others. You follow along. Pray with me from your heart as I pray. Almighty God, I recognize just by looking out at a gathering like this that we are not an accident. Each one of us is in your thinking and in your heart. You knew us and had us in mind even before you created the world. And you had us as the focus of your love. We don't understand very much but what we do understand is that we are not God and we confess today that you, Jesus Christ, are our Lord and Savior. And we have great reason to celebrate. We celebrate because you love us, you love me, and you love everyone in this room. And you're with us even during this Christmas season. There are going to be people in this room that feel so alone. May you... Lord Jesus, reveal your spirit to them that they experience the presence of Almighty God and that you're for us. If you're for us, what can happen to us? Who can be against us? And we thank you for your salvation, born to us a Savior, Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for saving me from my sins and from my selfishness. Thank you for the work you're doing in my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a purpose and a meaning. Thank you, Lord, that you've made it all possible. You did everything for me. And I simply need to accept who you are and invite you into my life. And this Christmas, oh, may there be peace in my heart with you, oh God. And may there be the peace of God that passes all understanding as I give you all my fears and worries, stresses and strains. And Lord, by your work in my life, may I reach out to bring peace in other people's lives. 
I don't understand everything there is about this relationship with you. But as much as I understand and as much as I know how, I say, Jesus, you are my life. Jesus, you're in charge of my life. Jesus, I give you who I am. Come into my life. To the glory of God, I pray this. Amen. Thanks for joining with us today in our live streaming of our service and our message. We're grateful that you joined with us. And if we can serve in any way, we'd be glad to do that. Just check out our website. That'll get you connected in any way that you might like to. And uh, that is greenvalleychurch.net. And we wish you the best and know that you really do matter to God. Have a great day.